Welcome, children of Aki, to Kune Anishinaabe, the song of the first ones, by Wabiska Makwa Meskwauki. Chapter 3 of Aki and Nibagesis. So it is that we come to the third generation of the children of Ishrami and eventually to mankind's very own beginnings. Aki, or Mother Earth as she is known, was born unto Jesus who was also called Nimama Anu, or our Mother Star. Aki was born unto Jesus in her first Giga year, third of fourteen stunning children, Marta, Venwa, Aki, Thea, Mocha, Oberon, Jukwa, Sadoa, Yoranoke, Naptha, Pluki, Kyber, Delphi, and Zinzi. Aki is the great 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 granddaughter of Nokomis Waban, the primal grandmother from which all light and matter comes forth. Great is the star daughter, and though she is young, she is very resilient and strong. And so it was that in her second Giga year, she and her brother Thea got into a terrible fight. Thea assaulted his sister ferociously, competing for attention from mother's son. Thea collided with Aki, and tempers flared violently. Aki, the elder of the two, was larger though, and it bit him cruelly, crushing Thea in her mouth and spitting out his bones around her. But grandmother's magic was working as ever it did and Ishpeming slowly reassembled what was left of Thea and bound him close to his sister so the two would learn to get along. Thea was changed forever though, for his heart and flesh were consumed by Aki, and as Grandmother Light's magic reassembled him in the sky next to his sister, he was named ni aba Jesus, or Moon, as he is more commonly known today. ni was much lesser than before, but only slightly less determined, and he pulled on Aki greatly as he circled her closely, trying to break free of his sister's bonds. So much so that Aki was in great pain and did cry so hard that her tears formed the primordial seas upon her face. It was at this time that the frozen tears of some of the fallen Niswazikata also fell from the heavens upon Aki's burning face. This made the seas upon her face even greater than they already were, and they were tumultuous and terrible to behold at this time. Enormous waves, as high as mountains slamming into one another across the entire face of Aki, and her grief was long and deep. Many seasons went by before Nibagesis matured and was granted some distance from his sister. Her tears eventually subsided, and the terrible sloshing mountains of waves became gentle seas. Together, the two would now sing their great song, and Aki became the gleam in Grandmother Light's eye, as Nibakisis was the pride of Grandfather Night. Now Grandmother's light magic caused Nibakisis to feel shame for his ostentatious act. So some nights, he hides behind Aki out of view. Other times, he only hides part of his face at night, and that's when we call him Oshkagunjing Jesus, or Crescent Moon. At other times, his pride shines forth, and he is called Oshka Jesus, or Full Moon. Niba Jesus, who is now called Moon, tells us of the seasonal changes, like when to plant, and when to harvest, when ice will form, and when snow will melt. He is the herald of seasons and foreteller of woman as when he eclipses his mother's son in the sky. His circling causes the tides of the seas upon Aki in conjunction with her dance, and he continually pulls her on his sister, even now in his timely 28-day orbit around her. Over time, the waves would lessen with each passing giga year as Nibagesis distanced himself away from Aki. Much like how human brothers and sisters get along better as they grow up, so too is the nature of Aki and Nibagesis. 
It was many moons, though, before Aki herself began creating and weaving her creations again. She was bitter after the assault of her brother, Thea, and in her grief, she dwelt a gigier within the depths of the seas of her sorrows and hid her face from her mother and all others. It was in this sorrow, with the help of the light of her mother, Jesus, that Aki was inspired to make the greatest of creations yet seen within Ishpeming. In her sorrow and reclusion, her seas of tears had frozen to her entire face, and she had become pale and cold to the touch. The ice upon her face was two miles thick, and she shrouded herself in her icy blanket of tears. It was at this time that Aki contracted a great fever from within, and all across her face boils did erupt, melting her frozen tears, and her face showed once more. Mother Sun tried to heal Aki as she helped wipe away Aki's frozen tears and aided her as she remade again the seas and lakes and lands that clothed her in majesty. Aki labored for many ages within the depths of her seas of tears until well into her third giga gear when she forged the first self-replicating cell, a wondrous event heralded no less by Brother Moon fully eclipsing Mother Sun in the sky. Mother Sun was beaming with joy over the arrival of her new grandchildren. Life was born upon Aki. The animals say that every living thing today upon the face of Aki owes its life to this incredible, mind-boggling event. For all life as man and the animals know it came forth at this time, ever so slowly at first. But soon the great tree of life sprang forth from the seven seas upon Aki and her bare face finally seen her mother's light once more, and Aki clothed herself in a beautiful blue dress from her tears and a stunning green woven blouse of grass and trees. Soon thereafter, small animals arose in the seas, and insects arose upon the land. The animals of the seas overtook the seas in multitudes, and it became very crowded, and so it was that the first hunters and monarchs of Aki were born out of necessity and eventually became the great predators of old, hundreds of renown, like the Crocodile King and the Giant Squid King, and the age of the hunter was born. It was at this time that the great constellation Orion was first seen in the night sky above Aki, heralding the new age, and is considered the constellation of the hunter unto this day. Many of the animals living at this time did not adapt to the new age very well, and perished under the reign of the Crocodile King and the Giant Squid King. So some of the sea animals thought they would escape and try living on land for a while. They found it exceedingly strange and difficult, nothing like the seas. On land they had to carry their own weight around and on their fins, but all in all there seemed to be no predators and insects were plentiful for the taking. So it was deemed by many of the refugee animals of the seas to have a better place to be than the under the reign of the Crocodile King and the Giant Squid King. So they stayed, and eventually some of their children would become the great thunder lizards who for hundreds of millions of years would rule the lands and forests upon the face of Aki under her council. Some would even re-enter the seas many generations after to reclaim what they deemed as stolen from them by the reign of the Crocodile King and the Giant Squid King, and one would become the greatest terror the seas have ever known. Then one evening, 65 million years ago, a dark foreboding figure appeared on the horizon in the night sky. As a bright, bright light racing towards Aki, a messenger of imminent doom and of change that came straight from the magic of Grandfather Knight himself and a reminder from him of his ancient paramount law, all that lives shall die. And with that, moments later, a deviant primordial cousin of Aki's, named Nibuan Wajiwan, or Death Mountain, slammed into her beautiful face, creating what is now called the Gulf of Mexico on the south side of North America, destroying himself and the reign of the great thunder lizards in one fell swoop for all time, as well as much of the life in Aki's seas. It took many years for Aki's tears to heal and repair her blue dress and green blouse, 
but eventually it was so, and new animals began to appear in the lands and the seas, but this time many things were different, much like when Ishpeming found new elements in the bones of Miawug and Kiawug so long ago, so too was the nature of the new life evolving upon her. Some were warm-blooded, like the lion, the bear, the walrus, and the beaver. Unlike their cold-blooded ancestors, the reptiles, they could go out into the cool of the night and not be slow in their movements and be very successful in their predations.